Okay. So again, what we're doing, we are starting Life Song Church family. These are kind of going to be like our, our updated membership classes or our family classes. I don't really like the word membership, but because we're a family, it should be, it should be family ship. <laughs> but that's not a word. I was going to call it family ship. And then they said, Mike, you're getting corny. I said, I, no, I think that really accurately describes it. Um, but so we're going to, you know, it's, it's, a mem- it's a family class. Um, and it's where nothing's really changed. We've been a church for 20 years. Nothing's really changed. Um, this just is a little bit more focused on really who we are. And we feel the direction that God has us going in. And so um, if, if you're here and you're not officially a part of our uh, church family and you think you might want to be, um, there's a, a clipboard, so on your way out, put your name, because then you get credit for this class. There's going to be four classes, and in order to be um, a, an official part of the family, um, you would have to take all four classes, okay? And then we're going to, at some point, we want to post these online, so you could do this online as well. I'm going to try to stick with my notes the best that I can, um, because I don't want to get on too many rabbit trails since this is going to be our official class and I want to try to get it done uh, in about you know 30 minutes so I might do a lot of reading I'm sure that's okay and again what you have in front of you are just the partial notes I'm teaching from um, over two pages of notes that are on the church planning center if you download that app have it right away Um, or if you go to our church website you can pull them up on the church website okay so here we go class one Love and commitment. That's the most important thing. We're going to start with the most important thing of all. It's love and commitment. We are a non-denominational, evangelistic, charismatic, Bible, biblical worldview, Christ-centered, ecclesiastical, spirit-filled church. That should explain it all right there. (laughs) We, We are a member of the Link Association of Churches, so we're not out here on our own. We're hooked up with a really great group of other Christian leaders that help give us direction. Lifesong Church um, has official bylaws and a statement of faith for those who are interested uh, in more specific details. So we have things spelled out even more if if you want, uh, and and those will uh, be available for access. So our vision, teaching answers for life. Simple, simple, simple vision. We believe everything is through the Word of God. Everything is through the Bible. We want to teach answers for life. This Bible is life. And and we have to, it's the word of God. It's Jesus Christ. It's life in our life. We want the word to become life in our life. Our motto is living the power of praise. Praise and worship and praising God. Do everything through through prayer and thanksgiving and that spirit of praise. Uh, That spirit of praise will break all kinds of bondages and demonic strongholds. Praise is very, very, very powerful. And we want to live that power of praise. Making a commitment to one another to walk in love, forgiveness, and unity releases God's anointing, his covering of protection over a church family. Establishing bylaws and a statement of faith helps protect us not only spiritually but legally. So it's good to have these guidelines um, with this crazy world that we live in and with it getting um, more and more progressive, more and more anti-word of God, it's really important for us that we establish these bylaws and a statement of faith so, so we can walk out our, our doctrine the way that we feel the Lord's called us to walk it out. Uh, the, the, the sacraments that we perform uh, for our, our, our family members, uh, a marriage, a uh, funeral, memorial, uh, using this building, you know, if you, if you want to do it for a graduation or something like that, if you're part of the church family, uh, that's something that's available to you. Um, baby dedication, uh, ministering support, these are all just blessings of being part of a church family. Psalms 92, 13 through 15, it says, Those who are planted, another word for that is committed, in the house of the Lord, which is that word house, also is family, shall flourish in the courts of God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh, which means filled with fresh oil, which is the anointing, which is the ability from God to carry out everything that he wants us to do. Sometimes we need that anointing. Some of the things that God asks me is like, I can't do this. But he's like, well, with, yeah, but with, with me you can, Mike. I need, we, we, we need, I need that anointing. 
And when we, when we come and we're planted, committed in the house, the family of the Lord, um, we're going to bear fruit in old age. I like that because I'm getting older. <laughs> and you shall be fresh and flourishing. Flourishing also, this is cool. I don't have it in here uh, defined, but flourishing means green and flexible. Yes, I want to be green and, and healthy and filled with fresh oil. These are promises of God. To declare that the Lord is upright. He's my rock, and there's no unrighteousness in him. Different Christian churches have different doctrines. That's okay. A doctrine is how we believe we should walk out our faith as a group of believers. No one has complete knowledge of the Word of God. No one. If somebody thinks they have all this stuff figured out, we'll pray for you because <laughs> no one does. The Word of God is so amazing and so complex, but yet so simple and so sweet. You know, I was talking with Jim this morning. He was kind of, we were kind of saying the same thing. It's like the more we know, the less we know because the Word of God is so amazing. So, so to think that if you're a church, you think, well, our doctrine has it all figured out and we're doing everything right. Uh, uh, I don't know about that one. It's, it's a relationship. It's a learning experience. It's, it's learning how to draw closer to God and how to love him, how to love one another. So we, we see and we understand in part, in part of the body of Christ, the greatest part that we walk in is agape love and commitment. That, that's the greatest part that, that we have to embrace the most. Um, when all else fails and you're confused, just remember, love God, love people. Because sometimes, you know, what do I do? What do I, I what, love God, love people, trust in him. In 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 13, 12 through 13, it says, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, that means at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. It, 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 it's love. This is what God came. God so loved the world that he gave. What did he do? He gave his son so we could learn to love like he does because we can't do it on our own. We cannot walk in, a, in agape love on our own. You can't do it. That's just, it, it's an unconditional love that loves no matter what. And so we need the Holy Spirit. It says the Holy Spirit will pour out that, that unconditional. Once we come to Christ through the blood, through the cross, then we too can partake of that unconditional love. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 2. And Paul said, he said, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. So even the apostle Paul is saying, look, I don't have it all figured out. That's what he's saying. I, I don't even have this all figured out. He says, for I have determined to know nothing amongst you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's all about Jesus and him being crucified. It's all about Jesus Christ. Everything is by him, through him, for him. And the world is trying to remove him that's what a lot of the new age and spiritualists and everything else, and a lot of them are really good people. I know some of them. They're really, really good people, but they, they, it's like they believe and hold, want to hold on to righteousness, but, and they believe that there's a God, and they believe that there's Jesus, but they don't believe that everything is through, by, and for Jesus. And that's a dangerous place to be. And so I hope and pray that their eyes will be open to see the truth, because without Jesus Christ, there is no truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. In a spirit of humility, we acknowledge no church has everything figured out. Since God's anointing flows through unity, right? We, 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 how, so, okay, so we're all going to see things a little differently. So then how do we see enough that we can walk in unity together? Because you're not, you're not going to agree with everything I say. If, if you're going to a church and you're looking at the pastor and you're thinking, well, you know, i got to agree with everything he says for me to go here. Well, forget it. Start your own church. And then you'll probably disagree with yourself. Because <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's like, I think it should be like this. Uh, but it's not. <laughs> and then God shows me something else. 
So we, we agree to disagree as long as Jesus and his crucifixion is the foundation of everything. Can we agree on that? Can we agree on the basic principle? You know, one of the most simplest things to agree on is the song that we sang, which is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I mean, that song that we sang is quintessential of what our, our faith is in, in one little song. That, I mean, can we just take that basic and agree on that? Because then there's all these other little elements that, that basically the Word of God says it's silliness to argue about all these other little different things of how we see. To me, the more mature you are, the more you understand that you can walk with people that see things a little differently and it's okay. Because we all have different gifts, different callings. We're going to see the Word of God through our gifts and calling because that's what God put in you. Whether you're a, a, a little bit more uh, evangelistic, where you like to really tell people about Jesus, or you're a little bit more of the line upon line teacher, uh, dot and tittle, or you know you might be a little bit more of, of the worshiper, the praise and worship, and through worship and the power of music, we're all going to see things a little differently based on the gifts and callings that are inside of us, and that's okay. God made us that way because He wants different parts of the body. We're not all the hand. We're not all the feet. We're not we're not all the the, the head or the eye. We're, we're all different parts. So we can flow and function together. Why did God make it that way? So, so we need one another. We need each other. And if you think you're an island on your own, you're mistaken. None of us are complete in ourself. We first of all need, need God, our Father God and Jesus Christ. And we need one another. He made us to need one another. That's why together we're greater and we're more stronger than when we're by ourselves. That's why there's a synergistic effect that takes place when we come together and pray. He made it that way on purpose. So that way we don't isolate ourselves because love is all about commitment and being together with people. It's very difficult to express the vast manifold wisdom of God, His Word, and how it relates to Life Song Church in only four 30 minute classes. Our hope is to give people a peace in their heart knowing that we are truly dedicated to our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Salvation is in Christ alone, faith by grace. That's our heart. We want everybody to understand that and see that. Our doctrine, now this is so important, our doctrine is not about a religion, but a relationship with God, who we call Father, Abba, Daddy God. How personal and sweet is our father when you come to know him. He's not an angry, mean God up there just waiting for you to mess up and put a strike against you. That's what some people think. Like God's up there watching you. If you do anything wrong, it's, oh, Mike, you screwed up again today. And another strike against you. One more. I don't know, buddy. You're really pushing it. It's like, no, come on. He's like, he's like, he, he's like okay, come on, Mike. Turn to me. Come on, come on. I'll help you, Mike. I'll help you. Just turn to me. Ah, oh, Lord, I messed up. Help me. Forgive me for this. Dad, I, I, I did something stupid. He goes, yeah, I know. Oh, well, okay. Well, then will you, will you forgive me for doing that? Yeah, Mike, I love you. Okay, good. Are we good, Dad? Yeah, we're good. Yes. That's the relationship. It's, it's not, it's not, it should never be to guilt you or, or shame you or manipulate you. God is not about shame, guilt, or manipulation. That's the enemy. You're not good enough. You screwed up again. God doesn't really love you. Your parents don't really love you. This is, what, this is one of the biggest lies to kids. You always disappoint your parents. And you're never going to be good enough for your parents. That is a stinking lie from the pit of hell. Christian parents love their kids. No matter what. With agape love. Now, are they going to challenge them? Yup. Are they going to correct them? Yup. Because they love them. God corrects us because he loves us. Through the cross and the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we've been adopted into his family. We are grafted into the lineage of Abraham. We are now joint heirs with Christ as we become children of God. How amazing is that? Why would somebody not want to be Christian? Blows my mind. God's saying, look, I'm going to forgive you for all the nasty stuff that you've done. In fact, you give me all your nasties, and I'm going to bless you with holiness, righteousness, and goodness. Why wouldn't you want to make that trade? 
And then, if that wasn't good enough, you're going to be joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ owns everything. And you're going to be joint heirs. Woo-hoo! Man, I can't wait till we get to heaven. Oh, no wonder why when Satan came to Jesus, remember when, when Satan came to tempt Jesus when he was out and he was fasting, and, and Satan said, I'm going to give you all this. Jesus is thinking, I already own all this. <laughs> <laughs> he knew who he was. And that's what we need to do is see who we are. Children of the King, of Father God. Romans 8, 14 through 17. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Suffer with him is not fun. But he's saying, look, you're going to have trials and tribulation in this world. It's just the way it is. It's, It's unavoidable. But if you'll do it with me, I'll see you through it. Because it is too much for you to carry on your own. And when we try to carry it all on our own, we can get squashed. Galatians uh, 4, 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of as sons and daughters. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Wow. What, what an amazing promise. What a fantastic blessing. All of this must be accomplished through his agape love that is poured out into our heart by the Holy Spirit. Without love, We ain't got nothing. Nothing. It's got to be done through love. If we don't do what we do through agape love, that means you have ulterior motives and you're doing it for yourself. And you're not building the kingdom of God. You're building the kingdom of me, self. If it's done through love, it's all being done for the other person. In the process, you get blessed. But we can't do it with... uh, I'm doing it all to draw people unto me. No, you're doing it all to to draw people to Jesus and point to him. Love is the bond of our our covenant relationship. It is a commitment to love one another in good times and in bad. This love is not based on how we are treated by others or how we feel. How we feel is filial love. And filial love is unsteady. It's up and down, because one day I feel like loving you, and one day I don't feel like loving you. It's based on emotions, and what are emotions? Woohoo! And emotions can be manipulated. And so filial love, well, I just don't feel it anymore. Well, okay, that's okay. You want agape love, which is a commitment, and when we make the commitment like Jesus said, and hold on to that commitment and put Jesus Christ first, then the feelings will follow. Our our agape love is based on a choice to lay our lives down, to love others like Jesus does. His love is not based on works, feelings, or how he is treated. After all, we nailed him to the cross. And he said, Father, forgive him. So if Jesus could forgive people that nailed him to the cross, spit on him, mocked him, whipped him, ridiculed the king of kings, the king of this universe, can't we? Because somebody maybe hurt your feelings. His love's unconditional. Satan, this is really good. Satan can manipulate our emotions. Satan can manipulate our mind. But he can't manipulate our will. Think of that. Our soul, three parts. Our soul is mind, will, and emotion. Mind, will, and emotion. Satan can manipulate your mind. 
He can manipulate your emotion, but he can't manipulate your will. That's why agape love is based on will and not emotion. Isn't that good? I don't know if anybody's ever seen that before, but I just saw it for the first time. God is so good. See, I learn with you guys. Life is a never-ending learning experience. Every time I crack open that Bible to learn or do something, I'm, I'm learning. I mean, I love it. I don't have it all figured out. <laughs> I don't have all the answers. I'm not the answer man. I don't have all the answers. I can help a little bit, and together we can talk and discuss. And between us, we, we can figure some things out, right? Now, you guys hope that I spend a lot of time studying, and I do <laughs> hours and a lot of time in prayer. Because when I come up here, you, you want me to have something of value and worth, and that hopefully is going to be accurate. But I'm not perfect. Romans uh, uh, 5, 3 through 5. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So the only way we can have agape love, which is unconditional love, is through, which is a choice, is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3, you know this one. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, I understand all the mysteries and the knowledge. And through I, and through I have faith for all so that I could move uh, mountains, but I have not love, I have nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. My, oh my, oh my, this blow my, blow. so I give everything away to the poor, and I'm willing to even burn my body, but if I don't have love, it's done in vain. How important is love? Through it, everything flows. 1 John 4, 17 through 19. Love has been perfected among us in this. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? Did somebody just read this? How did you know I was going to read this today? And it's part of our class one. You didn't. The Holy Spirit did, right? When you were reading it, I'm going, man, the Holy Spirit's so good. This is, this is the scripture that Darlene read for offering. Love has been uh, perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. We're supposed to be like Jesus to people, unconditional love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Oh, man, there's so much in that. But I want to get through this, so I'm going to keep reading. By faith, the sacraments of communion that we take every Sunday fills and empowers us with his unconditional love. Through communion, we are signifying our willingness to pick up our cross and love like Jesus loves. We love people right where they are at, and we pray for the power and the love of the Holy Spirit to change our hearts. This is a saying around here. You're going to hear it again and again and again. We love people right where they're at. We don't expect them to be perfect. Then everybody's not walking around. Well, well they did, they did. He said, did, blah, blah. Like, pfft. we love people right where they're at. We're still accountable. You, you, you can't do everything and, and whatever you want and think there's, there's no account. Of, there's, there's accountability, but we love people right where they're at, uh, believing in the power and the love of the Holy Spirit to change our hearts. John 13, uh, uh, 34, 35, a new commandment I give you that you love one another, not a suggestion. Jesus said, it's a commandment, not a suggestion, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you're my disciples. You have loved one for another. Making a commitment to become part of a church family is our defense against the attack of the enemy. The commitment is a statement of faith, making a decree to walk out our salvation as brothers and sisters in the Lord. A decree has authority, and authority brings protection as God's synergistic covering is released as we gather and connect in the name of the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. Luke 22, 31 through 34. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you 
that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. So Jesus is saying, look, Peter, I'm going to pray for you that your faith isn't going to fail, but it's going to look like it failed because you're going to do something really stupid. You're going to deny me. But when you have come back again and repented, now use that experience to strengthen your brothers and realize none of us are perfect. But he said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you deny me three times that you don't even know me. Ouch. Satan will do everything he can to separate us as wheat by releasing his demons of offense, pride, criticalness, jealousy, unforgiveness, self-pity, selfishness, doubt, rejection, resentment, and deception. If we stand together in love, holding on to one another, allowing God's covenant commitment to flow through us, we will stand strong in unity. God's anointing flows when we stand in unity. Satan wants to break the unity so he can take away the anointing so he can sift you as wheat and knock the snot out of you. This is only possible through a spirit of humility and forgiveness. Every one of us will go through Targeted attacks. None of us are exempt from these attacks. Satan wants to separate us from the fold, our church family. When this happens, we will, we will do and say things that are hurtful and damaging to others. When we get under attack, when life gets heavy, when we get depressed, when we feel like we can't take it anymore, a, a lot of times we say and do things that we regret, that are, that are harmful, that hurt um, other people, that... Uh, we, we, we get upset, uh, you know, we say vicious things, or we'll go out, we'll do something stupid, or lust, and whatever. I mean, you know, get drunk, uh, cut ourselves, uh, whatever things, you know, because we're not coping, and we don't know how to cope, and we're under this spiritual attack. So when that happens to somebody in the body of Christ, the things that we are supposed to do in this critical moment for that person is not, not look at them and go, well, it deserves them right. Or, well, they didn't listen to me anyways. Well, that's their own fault. Well, blah, well, they haven't been in church. Well, they haven't been doing what I told them to do. Well, come on, what are you doing? You're taking that person's that down, and you're kicking them while they're down. No, it's supposed to be, come on, I love you. It's okay, man. Come on, God, they care about you. Come on, what, whatever you did, that's okay. Come on, God loves you. He cares about you. He's going to see you through this, and I'm here to pray for you. I forgive you. God forgives you. Let's go. Come on. Don't walk away from the body of Christ. Don't let this separate you. We're supposed to be there in that critical moment to love each other so we can build up and help those that are under attack. Not go around saying, well, do you know what someone's head? said? Do you know what they said? And, and, and I know sometimes we have to talk about things because, you know, we, we, as a pastor, I got to deal with issues. You know, we don't sweep everything under the rug. Now, I have to know what's going on, but it's, it's with the right heart. It's with the, the, uh, to care and to lift up and to strengthen, not to separate and, and attack and tear down. And Galatians, final scripture, Galatians 6, 1 through 5. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespasses, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness. So those of you who are mature, restore these other ones, considering yourself, lest you be tempted. If we're not willing to restore those, then watch out, because now the attack's coming on you. When you get critical and judgmental at these ones who maybe made a mistake, you better be careful. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will re have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. We, we have to look at ourselves and, and carry what we need to carry, which are the things of God, which is the love of God, so then we can give that love of God to those around us. Not being judgmental and critical. and We're going we're to bear what we have to bear for the cross, for Jesus. There are times when God will move people from one church family to another. That's awesome. We believe in that. We tell everybody, you got to do what the Lord's telling you to do. But when a family leaves and goes to another church, we are still all in the same family of God. Right? God's going to, he's going to transplant Christians. You got to do what God's telling you to do. And that's okay. Just make sure you're left with the right heart. And then, 
And, and then we have to look at the ones that leave. We still love them. We care about them. We're still part of the same family, right? Even when somebody leaves here, we're still part of the same family. I don't care if they leave here and they say bad things about me or stab me in the back. I don't care. I love them. I'm thankful for what they've done. I'm glad that they were a part of our church. They're my brother and sister in the Lord still. The blood's thicker than the mud. Come on. I still love them. I still care about them. And they're still welcome to come back and say hi. I'll give them a hug. I'll pray for them. I'll do anything I can to help them. Because it's about the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of life song. Yeah? Good first class? All right, God is good. Okay. All right.